My name is Alejandra, and I'm a museum educator at the Art Institute of Chicago. In this video, we'll be looking together at a work of art from our collection. Let's begin our exploration of this artwork by looking at it closely and quietly for a few moments. Start by looking at the main part, or body of this jar. What do we see? What grabs your attention? What colors and designs do you notice? What do the shapes look like or remind you of? Now look at the top of the piece. How is it different from the body? What materials might have been used to make each part? If you could touch each part, how would it feel? How would the top feel compared to the body of the jar? This object was designed to be decorative, but it is also a container. What do you think it might have held? This artwork is titled Chocolate Jar with an Iron Locked Lid, and it was made in Puebla, Mexico between 1725 and 1775. This style of object is called Talavera Poblana. The word Talavera describes the style of pottery that was often made in the town of Talavera de la Reina in Spain. The word Poblana refers to Puebla, so this lets us know that this was made in Puebla, Mexico. Though this type of artwork is specific to Puebla, we can see connections to other cultures that were made through trade. When we look at the shape of the container and dark blue designs, we see the strong influence of Chinese blue and white porcelain that was decorated with cobalt blue. If we look at the very bottom of the jar, we can see that it looks a bit different than the rest of the body of the jar. It does not have the same shiny surface and the color is darker. This gives us a clue as to how this object was created. It was held on the bottom and turned upside down so that artisans could dip the jar into a white creamy glaze. The darker color we see at the bottom is the natural clay peeking through because it is unglazed. Though this container was originally made to be a flower vase, it eventually turned into a chocolate storage jar by adding the iron lid to keep chocolate, something locals considered precious, locked away. This container likely held cacao beans rather than chocolate in its finished form because cacao beans were easier to store. Chocolate remained a special treat for many years, though its uses and purposes changed with time. In the Americas, chocolate was sometimes used as part of ceremonies, as currency, and as medicine. Under Spanish colonization, chocolate became a treat for the wealthy with the addition of sugar, driving international trade and the spread of chocolate around the world. At the time this artwork was created in the 18th century, Mexico was referred to as New Spain or the New World because the area was previously unknown to Europeans and Spain claimed the land as their own. However, millions of indigenous people had already been living in the Americas for thousands of years by the time European colonizers landed from Britain, Spain, Portugal, France, and the Netherlands. In order to maintain their recently claimed political and social power, Spanish colonizers created laws and regulations to keep themselves in powerful positions, including who was allowed to create Talavera Poblana. Though indigenous, black, and mixed heritage artisans worked in Talavera Poblana ceramic factories and likely helped create this piece, only white artisans were recognized for their efforts by European authorities. Even today, pieces of Talavera Poblana can only be produced in Puebla and can be found throughout the city in various forms, such as tile and dishware. Pieces of Talavera Poblana continue to be a great source of pride for many people in Puebla and throughout Mexico. Food traditions are important to families and cultures. This iron lock jar was used to store chocolate, which was very valuable at the time it was made. Chocolate was only consumed during special occasions. Find a friend or family member and interview them about a special occasion food in their life. You can ask these next questions to start off your interview. What is a food that you eat during special occasions in your family or community? How would you describe this special occasion? How is this food stored or served? Does it have its own special container or tools to make it? Is there a connection or reason why you eat this food at this time? 
In my family, tamales are made during special occasions like Christmas. Since tamales take a long time to prepare, we all make them together and keep extras in the freezer so we can enjoy them all winter long. If you think about a special food in your life, what could a container for that food look like? Draw a picture of your container. If your food already comes in a special container, pick one detail about it and explain why it stands out to you. Thank you so much for joining me in exploring this wonderful work of art from our Arts of the Americas collection. You can see this artwork at any time you'd like through our website, and you could check to see if it's on display the next time you visit the museum in person. Have fun learning about food traditions, and I hope to see you soon.